episode. Welcome to Count Two Nine Nine. I'm Sean Bradley. Koji des. Thanks for everyone for checking out our last video.、Uh, we managed to get a hundred subscribers in less than one week. Hundred subscribers. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you.、Uh, thanks for sharing. Thanks for everyone on Squared Circle, Twitter, getting the video out there.、It、really means a lot to us. We put a lot of work in. So this month we wanted to kind of take a look at the attitudes of Japanese people and how they perceive their Japanese wrestlers when they move to America.、Uh, what kind of feelings the Japanese fans have towards them kind of leaving Japan? And also how they feel about their successes when they move to another country as well. So, Koji is going to do a lot of the talking today. I know in the last video, I did most of the talking, but I really wanted to get Koji's opinion. Obviously, Koji owns Count Two Nine Nine, so he interacts with a lot of Japanese pro wrestling fans as well. So he hears all of these opinions and comments. So he's kind of prepared some answers for us today. So the most recent wrestler to obviously make The big jump was obviously Shinsuke Nakamura. Obviously, Shinsuke was a huge part of、uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he had a lot of buzz about him around the time that he left for WWE. When Shinsuke was in Japan and when Shinsuke first started, Koji, what kind of reputation did、uh, Shinsuke Nakamura have, and how did Japanese people think about Shinsuke when he was in Japan?、Mm. 最初の発表があった時はやっぱり一番最初はびっくりしましたよねでやはりまあ日本を離れる形になるのでやっぱり寂しい、えー、気持ちが大きかったと思いますでも半分、えー、喜ばしい、えーまあ、世界でどこまで活躍するのかっていうのが、えー、楽しみになったので、えー、半分半分の、えー、気持ちで、えー、見てました OK so when, when Shinsuke announced OK everyone I'm leaving New Japan, I'm going to WWE.、Mm -hmm. What kind of feeling did the fans have then? Yeah, I know, WWE in New Dan or Happy Osha to Kiwa, it's got a big Christmas. それと同時に少し日本のプロレス界が、えー、心配になりました、えー、なぜなら、えー、中村俊輔選手は、えー、新日本プロレスの,のトップ選手の一人、えー、でありますので、えー、その選手を WW が取ったということは日本のプロレスの、まあ、いい選手がいっぱい取られるこれから取られるんじゃないかなという心配に、えー、少しなりました、えー、それくらい今 WW ではいっぱい選手を獲得、えー、しているのでえーはい、so, when Shinsuke was announced to go to WWE, the WWE at that time they already had、uh, Asuka, they had、uh, Hideo Itami. Both of these wrestlers had strong reputations, I think. WWE had kind of cast aside the stereotype Japanese character. Back in the day, we had Kai and Tai, Choppy Choppy Pee Pee, that kind of thing. But I think WWE were kind of past that and decided that you know, Hideo Itami,、uh, Asuka, they needed to be built like the superstars that they are. So, with Shinsuke, I don't think many people were worried about how he was going to be booked. But initially, when he had his first feud with Dolph Ziggler, some people were kind of a little bit disappointed. I mean, Dolph is what, a fantastic wrestler, but.、Mm. I think everyone thought that Shinsuke Nakamura would be pushed straight into the you know, title picture. Well, recently, myself and Koji went to、uh, WWE in Osaka, right?、Mm -hmm. And we got to experience obviously Shinsuke coming out to the fans and the huge reaction that he got because he was obviously in the WWE title match against Jinder Mahal. But I think it's. Worked pretty well overall. So, Koji, how, how do Japanese fans feel now and the future of Shinsuke Nakamura? Nakamura is a very good speed of the step up. So, the Japanese fans are very good. In the past, the Hideo Itami is a very good player. He is a very good p l a y 時間がかかりますね、ステップアップするには。うんえー、ですが、中村選手はものすごいスピードで今、えー、特にスマックダウンに入ってから、えー、上がってますので、非常に驚いてます。えー、ついていけてない
、えー、ぐらいですねで、まあ、彼はまあ近々ダブダブリ王者に多分なると思いますえー、ですが、まああの、そこまで、えー、行くということはすごく素晴らしいことですし、えー、王者になれば、えー、日本人初、えー、WW チャンピオンになりますので、えー、すごいことですすごく遠くに行ってしまう感覚があるので、うんえー、少しだけ寂しさもあります。Yeah, I think a lot of people are looking forward to that moment if or when Shinsuke Nakamura becomes The champion, I imagine it'll be a big event in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next part of the show, we tried this last time. We did Ichazo Bakiyoro. So this month, we're going to be looking at Gado's phrase from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, Koji, you can do your best impression.、Mm. You're going to have to roll your, your R's, I think. Red Bull. <laughs> can you do it? g a m b a r e You ready?、Uh... Ready? Se no. レベルが違うんだよ、この野郎。パーフェクト、完璧。<笑> so, what does this mean? So, let's break it down word by word. Obviously,、uh, the first word is レベル。レベル。Which is the katakana pronunciation of level. Obviously, in Japanese language, any foreign words, Coca Cola, Starbucks, or whatever, they, they use the katakana to show those words. So, level is just leburu. The next word, chigao. So, chigao can be different, but it can also be wrong as well. So, I think in this context,、uh, Gado is using the definition of different. So, he's saying that he's on a different level. And then the last part, kono yaro. <laughs> kono yaro.、Mm-hmm. Now, obviously,、uh, in Japanese language, anytime you roll your R's, like kora, like that kind of kora, you're Kind of, it's almost like Yankee, yeah, <laughs> Yakuza style, like a bit more aggressive. So, anytime you hear that, try to think of that as the person swearing. Kono yaro could be, I guess, either or son of So, if you put the whole thing together, you could say, Okada is on a different level, you son of. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. So, that's Gado's phrase. One, one more time.、Mm-hmm. Excellent, perfect. The next part is the wrestler of the month. So, this month, Koji, who is your wrestler of the month? Hi, I am a wrestler of the month. I am a wrestler of the month. I am a wrestler of the month. I am a wrestler of えー、スーパースターの一人ですね、えー、スターダムから、えー、WW に入った選手ですまだ彼女は、えー、っと6月かな、うんえー、WW に入団を発表してメイアンクラシックに出場したという流れなので、えー、まだアメリカの生活が慣れていないんですねで彼女まだ英語も少ししか、えー、お話ができないという状態で、えー、いきなりトーナメントで、えー、違う国の選手と戦っていかないといけないという、えー、厳しい環境の中での出場だったのでどこまでやれるか、えー、期待と不安が半分半分。という感じで見ていましたが結果、まあ、優勝という素晴らしい結果を残したことは素晴らしいことだと思いますそして彼女がスターダム時代から使っていたダイビングエルボードロップのフィニッシャーが WW でも使えると使用できて今のフィニッシャーもダイビングエルボーでその技で優勝ができたということは非常に素晴らしいことだと思いますしすごく嬉しかったことです。はい。Yeah, Koji raised like a lot of good points. Be- before Kylie went to America, she actually had an event here at Count 299,、uh, which was her kind of farewell party. I was lucky enough. After the show, to actually ask her a few questions before she left for WWE. Obviously, she couldn't say too much. I, I wanted to ask her about being able to use the diving elbow,、uh, I wanted to ask her about some other things, but we kind of had that agreement not to talk about too much of WWE. But we, we asked her about who she was looking forward to working with. She mentioned people like Bailey, Sasha Banks, she's looking forward to working with them. We 
asked her about her opinions on Asuka. There were some rumours going around that there may be some bad blood between Kaidi and Asuka for some reason, so I just asked her directly, uh, and she said that she actually respects Asuka in a high capacity, so there's no bad blood there whatsoever. But also, yeah, Koji, you mentioned about her English as well. I think, as an English teacher, I would definitely rank Kaidi's English uh, one of the top ones. I think, obviously, Shinsuke Nakamura is maybe, obviously, top. Uh, he studied English at university, I think. I'm not too sure. I'll have to check that. But he he has a high level of English, obviously. Next would be, I, I reckon, Kaidi. Then maybe Hideo Itami, and then maybe Asuka towards the bottom. I've managed to have at least a little bit of conversation with all of them, except for, obviously, Shinsuke Nakamura. And the general vibe that I get is Kaidi is probably one of the, the, the top female Japanese pro wrestlers who can actually speak English. There was a funny segment after the Mae Young Classic where they had uh, Funaki mm -hmm. and he was kind of translating everything that Kaidi was saying. But I think at one point Funaki kind of got lost. He said, oh, uh, uh, she, she said uh, this, I think. Uh, uh, and Kaidi just kind of went, yeah, I think she's very strong. Uh, I'm very happy to have won. <laughs> and poor Funaki was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, so he, he didn't need to be there. So I, I have every faith that she will uh, definitely improve with her English. So my wrestler of the month is uh, Kaho Kobayashi. Kaho is probably my favorite female wrestler, mainly because I'm a big believer in the the whole phrase of it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. She's a teeny tiny five foot, which is about 152 centimeters. But every time she goes out there, she absolutely kills it, you know, drop kicks all over the place. And over the past like two years at least, she, she just skyrocketed. Recently, she became like a triple crown champion. She won the Oz Tag Team Championship. She won the uh, Reina International Junior Heavyweight Championship and also the Wave Tag Team titles. Unfortunately, she actually lost the Wave Tag Team title recently, I was told. But still, three, three belts in such a short time was absolutely amazing. Last year, she went to Mexico to kind of hone her craft and you can definitely tell there are some elements of that that she's brought back with her. I think Kaho is going to be one to watch for this year for sure. So that's everything for episode two. Thanks again for joining us. Hopefully you've learned a couple of things. Thanks for sharing the video. Thanks for liking us on, on YouTube. Be sure to make sure you follow Koji on Twitter and myself on Twitter. Send us a message. Let us know what you want to see in future episodes. If there's any phrases that you want us to translate, we'll try and do our best. See you, see you next, next time, time on Count One, Two... two. Oh <laughs> <laughs> English, I did Japanese. <laughs> okay, we'll do uh, Yokoso. Yokoso. Welcome, welcome to. Ah, okay, okay. Yokoso, welcome. Okay, okay, okay. Ready? Mm. Say no.